Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Life and Style with Zara. I'm your host, Zara Durrani. We live in such a fast-paced world. Finding a spiritual balance and a connection with God is more important today than ever. Our hope with Life and Style is to help you find our viewers a more balanced life and perhaps along the way, realize your dreams. Today we'll be meeting with former boxing champ and actor Alex Ponovic and artist Garrett Campbell Wilson. Let's see what they have to say. Along the way we have a few surprises for you so stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Right now we're here with actor, writer, executive producer, and former amateur boxing champ, Alex Ponovic. Alex, Hi. how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us today for our first episode on Life and Style. This is exciting, isn't it? It's very exciting. I'm really exciting. excited about this. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> now, what have you been up to? Um, I, I've been having a great year of just being busy and working. I find one of the best things when you do work as an actor that you work with friends. Mm -hmm. And I've had, uh, I've been blessed with the opportunity to work with a lot of friends in a bunch of different projects and with one of my best friends, Tom O'Panikit, on, on a short film that we executive produced that we're actually going, hopefully going towards a series with. Oh, so, yeah, wow. it's just been really busy. Yeah, yeah. It's and been what, good. what is that film? It's called The Hostage, mm -hmm. and um, we did, a, did it as a 22-minute short film, and then we went to the, to the fact beyond of knowing that we can actually produce something, and, and it was really exciting for us because it was the first thing we've done, and that now there's some interest that they see it actually being something that could go into a series, and we're just gonna, we're gonna explore it, seeing something that we wanna do, but it's nice to have that opportunity. Oh, great, well, we're looking forward to seeing what The Hostage is. I'm looking is. forward to doing it. Good, good <laughs> stuff. Now, uh, you've worn a lot of hats, like me, Musician, yeah. boxer, yeah. actor, writer. It's like, how do you stay sane? You do. You're doing all well, these I, things. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of of when things come by me. I want to give it a try, and I've been really lucky the way I brought up that that you know my parents and, and my brother especially, who I consider you know uh, a big influence in my life that just to go for the things that you want to go for. And I've, I've been fortunate. I grew up in a boxing family. My dad was a boxer, my uncle, my grandfather. Yeah. So I love the aspect of, of what it does to one's mind and body of, of just concentrating on how far you can take your body to certain extents. So that, being a boxer, was really attractive to me. And, you know, being an executive producer and being in, being in film, I started, I started film with stunts. So I had a great mentor in, in Winnipeg where I grew up, where I started in stunts. And that was something to me that, that really got me to see the, the environment of the industry that made me fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, and I started out as, as, a, as a bass player in a rock band. And, and that took and me into really years. And you had really long hair back I, I, then. I saw really some long of the photos, hair. I was, yeah. <laughs> very much so. You had your 80s hair moment. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Very much so. The and whole Bon Jovi. I still get razzed by yeah. it. I still get razzed by it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As an artist, it does take quite a bit of faith to be able to jump right in and try all these things. The belief in yourself that you know, hey, like, uh, are there moments of fear that you're like, man, is this going to work out when you're taking on different projects? Yeah, see, that, there's moments of fear in everything, I, I think. I think everyone, but, but I think we're spirituality and faith in yourself like I, I I didn't I didn't grow up in so much of a religious family mm -hmm. but I did grow up in a family that really was really about believing in yourself and 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 finding that one center I mean a acting is a really difficult job I mean it's anybody that wants to be an actor the, the, the belief in themselves is a huge thing and it's constantly tested with all the rejection that's the thing it's constantly tested and the thing is to come you're coming back to the point of the rejection isn't about me as a person the rejection is about the specific role mm -hmm. and if you feel like there's something better that you could do then that's just learning on the next level but that takes some time yeah. it, especially being an artist it takes some time to really understand yourself and it has to come from a core what inspires you is there a particular person you look up to do you have like any heroes somebody that you know you look at and you're like 
Yeah. It's, it's interesting because for me, there, I have a lot of people in my life that inspire me day to day, minute to minute, and, and it's the situations that I, I feel like maybe I couldn't have done at the time that I see them doing. But ever, ever since I was a kid, um, you know, and, and there's so many people that say this, but it's, it sits true to me, is Muhammad Ali was a huge inspiration to me. Not just as a, as a fighter, which I, I totally admire um, anybody that gets in the ring and, and fights. There's, there's a huge, it's a different level of person, a different level of commitment. But his conviction outside of the ring, his, his things to risk three years of his career of not going into the army because he believed in the religion. Yeah. That convinc not the religion, it's, it's the conviction for something you believe in is incredibly inspiring to me. And it doesn't even have to be that huge of a life goal mm -hmm. or that huge of a life decision. It's the conviction of giving something up that you love mm -hmm. for something that you believe. That to me, I, I fell in love with the man and I, I had the honor of meeting him yeah. a few years ago. And I, I, it was funny because I, I, I couldn't. Were you nervous? <laughs> not only was I nervous, I was bawling. I could not control myself. I, my lip was quivering and I'm looking at him <laughs> and I finally got to tell the man that I've admired so much, how much he had, I admire him. Wow. And just to see, because Parkinson's has taken his body yeah. over, but it, his eyes are still so full of life. So to actually get to get a chance to tell him what I think of him and how he's influenced me through and looking into his eyes, there's nothing nothing that could top that. I was extremely fortunate to meet my idol. So. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. It was it was pretty amazing. How did that, that happen? Uh, a, a really good friend of mine had um, he was here for. Um, the screening of Facing Ali, which was a documentary, and I just asked me, she, and she knew I was a big fan, Roy Richards, she just knew I was a huge fan, and she said, I got a job for you, I went, well, what? I, I need you to look after Muhammad Ali when he's here. My jaw <laughs> dropped, I'm work. like, what? <laughs> yeah, where do, what do I do? I'll dance like a monkey, whatever whatever it takes, and it got to be, I got I got to be friends with, with, his, uh, with his wife also, and, and just to like, have have the man like guide the man into the theater and sit down next to him, like it was just it was so amazing. So many people would just like die. I know. To be I know. In your shoes. And one of the things I've always said in my life was that I really hope I don't stumble in meeting him. I really hope I don't see him in an airport. Like I don't want that to be the. the I, I I would I would pass that up if mm -hmm. there was a more intimate opportunity. Yeah. And I've said that my whole life, and it, 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 happened, it happened exactly the way I wanted it to. You put your mind to it. It was like your entire right? being was I, praying for it to happen, and it happened. There was there was yeah. there was a couple times where I just missed him at the airport. Like wow. I, I happened to be at the airport, and somebody just said Muhammad mm -hmm. Ali was here, and I was had this relief of like. Whew, I didn't get to I didn't get to see him because I didn't want that to be the time. Yeah. So it worked out really well. I was really happy about that. You know, one thing I really admire about Muhammad Ali is that you know um, I noticed that from his time as Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali and just the belief in himself that you know even though yes sometimes it may come across as arrogant or whatever but I feel like that firm belief in yourself and I feel that as an artist. Artists need that, yeah. and any human being needs that. That you know, yes, you know, but I see, am, it, I am the greatest right. even before I knew right. I was. Exactly, and yeah. the thing is, he, I don't find any of his things um, arrogantly cocky. I find him tongue in cheek mm. cocky. Mm -hmm. It's always said with a joke, and always in the back of his head. I believe it, and I'll, I'll show you soon. Instead of telling you mm -hmm. that he's like that, he'll just say it. Yeah. That's that I think that was the difference between someone someone like that that you know he he influenced so many people around the world most recognizable person in the world but he did it more out of the ring than it was in the ring. Mm -hmm. That's that that's what kind of made it a a huge influence to me is that you get to see him live as a man and live yeah. as a fighter. Yeah. And yeah, that that I was fortunate enough to again, I'm not the only one. I was just fortunate enough to to um, just try to do the little things that I could mm -hmm. um, as life went on the way he would. Now, um, is there any particular 
ritual or a prayer or something that you do before you're supposed walking the red carpet or you know you're going for a big audition against you know say Ashton Kutcher or right, Michelle right. you know is there something that you do that you're like okay this is gonna ground me this is gonna center me and I'm really gonna be in my element I, I mean when it, when it really matters to me there's there's a couple things when things really matter to me and, and I've got to check in I, I have my own I have my own things that kind of ground me and get me to check in and then there's other things for like when it when it's a day-to-day -day thing like uh, um, you know just the my friend a friend of mine Victor would always pray before he would eat and that's not something I grew up with and I always was asking I'm like that's cool. I don't know and he goes, I don't, I don't pray to anything. I just basically, I, I know that I eat about four or five times a day. And those are the moments that I can just give thanks for the food, give thanks for the people in my life. Just kind of check in. I'm like, oh, that, that's great. I like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, try to, I try to do that. And also, again, coming from a boxing background, skipping to me is a huge zen kind of kind of getting me in this mantra of, of just uh, trying to ground myself. So there's a little little things here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. I That's really awesome. appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And that was really beautiful. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear about your Muhammad Ali story. And, you know, maybe I'll get to meet him one day. Bye. We're now going to take you on a culture crawl. Each week, we're going to be exploring a different practice from a different faith. This time, we're going to be taking a close look at yoga. Joining us will be Master Yogi, Will Blunderfield. Let's see what Will has to say. Anybody can do yoga. Anybody can connect to who they really are. And the teachings of yoga are that who you really are is pure positive energy. So anytime you feel insecure, anytime you think, oh, well, you know, this isn't for me, who am I to be shining so bright, any of that kind of stuff, that's just societal programming. Yoga, a Sanskrit word that dates back to ancient India, has its roots in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. The word yoga literally means yoke, or the act of yoking or harnessing something. Some people say, I, I don't do yoga, I am yoga. Yoga means union, it means connection with whatever you want to connect with. Your body, your non-thinking mind, source energy, God, nature. In Hindu philosophy, yoga is one of the six philosophical schools of thought and is often compared to Samkhya, another of the six schools which denies the existence of God. Some studios choose not to have any Hindu deities up. Yoga is associated with Hinduism, but it's not exclusive to people who practice the Hindu faith. God is a force, according to yoga. It's not a person who sits up in the sky and judges you. It's, some, it's something that's a little bit deeper and, and less hard to define through words. It's credited to the Hindu sage Patanjali, who wrote the Yoga Sutras, considered by most to be the foundational text of yoga. Several types have since branched off over the years. From my understanding, uh, bhakti or devotional yoga is what most people are practicing in the West. It's when you close your eyes at the beginning of the class and you set an intention. You, um, you're doing what you're doing to get stronger and more grounded and more uh, into your own uh, dharma and your own path so that you can help more people. It's always a devotional act. I think in some circles it's become like, oh, I need to do this to look better, to please other people. But the teachings of yoga are, it's not about self-improvement, it's about accepting yourself radically as you are. So having a more sleek physique is a side effect, it's not what you're focusing on in yoga. So if you're just making an effort to heal yourself in the present moment and nurture that child inside of you, then that energy is going to be available to everybody in your life. And that's what I'm doing when I teach yoga, it's really just you're coming to my class and you're seeing somebody who's working on healing themselves. And when you heal yourself, that energy is more able to flow to other people. You know, it's a process. You know, we're not perfect, but it's, uh, that's why they call it a yoga practice, not yoga perfect.